This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report. We're broadcasting on over 500 stations around the country, on Pacifica and NPR and PBS and public access TV stations on both TV satellite networks, Dish Network Channel 9415, Free Speech TV, 9410, Link TV, and on Direct TV Channel 375, and we're video and audio podcasting at democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman. As we take on the issue of what happened on September 11, 2001, our guests are Dylan Avery, writer and director of Loose Change, Jason Burmis, researcher for the film. James Meggs is also with us, editor-in-chief of Popular Mechanics, and David Dunbar, executive editor of Popular Mechanics, who led the auditorial team that produced the book, Debunking 9-11 Myths. Um, Jim Meggs, um, you're the editor-in-chief of Popular Mechanics. Your response to this excerpt of Loose Change about what happened in Shanksville. You know, that clip is really interesting because it shows how uh, slickly made this film is, how compelling it is at at asking a series of sort of hanging questions and putting some spooky music behind it and making it sound as if uh, someone's covering up these facts, but a, a, a brave researcher can dig down and, and, uh, and put all the pieces together. In fact, there's answers to all those questions. If you look at the, uh, the sources that were used throughout that clip, they're all things that came up in the first day or two after the attacks. In some cases, somebody standing across a field and saying, I don't see a plane. Well, when a plane strikes the ground at uh, over 500 miles an hour flying almost straight down, there typically isn't much visible above ground. They also um, quote the coroner in the Shanksville area. Um, we talked to the coroner. He had the horrific job of collecting the body parts and, and, cat, and cataloging, uh, um, performing all the necessary tests. Those bodies were identified. The, uh, the plane wreckage in the pieces, the tiny pieces that it was in after it, it hit the ground was, uh, was you know, collected from the hole, cataloged, the, um, and the black box was recovered. And we know what went on because of the, uh, the records of the voice cockpit recorder. And in this case, quite a few phone calls from the, um, uh, from the aircraft itself to various people on the ground. So we know a lot of what happened in Flight 93. The film is alleging that no plane crashed there at all. Uh, the people were sent off somewhere to uh, somehow be disposed of. If you're going to allege something so far beyond what a huge body of evidence would suggest is the truth, then you do need to come pull together some evidence. And so uh, we fully support asking questions and being skeptical. But if you're going to ask questions, you also have to look for the answers. And, and, and when you get answers, you can't ignore them. James Burmis of Loose Chain. I'd just like to thank Jason. you uh, for the opportunity to take on the government's lies and uh, Popular Mechanics, which is a Hearst Yellow Journalism publication's lies as well. And I would just say, look for yourself. This is an open field, and for the first time in history, we have a crater and no plane debris. Look at any other plane crash, and you'll find a tail section, a wing section. There were reports that this actually was strewn out over eight miles, and we have videotape of smaller pieces of debris. Uh, the coroner speaks for himself. We have the Pittsburgh Gazette, the editor-in-chief there saying, again, there's nothing there that looks like a plane. Again, don't believe us. Go to seeloosechange.com right now and watch it for free. But take a look. All those people, you would use, normally have NTSB people in blue jackets to get the plane parts and put them back together. That's what happened with TWA 800 that was in the ocean. And you don't have that. You have people in hazmat uniforms. Why? So all we're saying is, look, there's no plane in this open field at all. There's a 10-foot crater by 16-foot, and there's just smoke there. So where is this plane? That's all we're saying. What about uh, what the coroner said, collecting body parts? Well, he's never addressed us. And if you look at all of his media accounts in the days after when he was first asked, again, he said there were no body parts. And to this day, he has not seen a single drop of blood. So again, I would say that's more reliable than you know four years after the fact being contacted. Did you talk to him? Uh, he won't address us. Basically, we have had people contact him, and it hangs up on us. I find, typically when we investigate these things, it's very easy to find public records, to find um, uh, the reports from all the various agencies that have investigated uh, these accidents. The, uh, the transcripts of the voice cockpit recorder have been released. In many cases, again, the, the sources, Jason, uh, those are all newspaper articles that are written the day of, day after, a couple of days after. No, one you of them know was what, a year after the fact. Uh, uh, oh, perhaps. Uh, you know no, what it was, was like on those days, and you know how chaotic it was. You know how much misinformation typically comes out in the early hours of a, of a major news event. Over time, with further research and good reporting, you can sift through those things and you can make progress in getting to the truth. Typically, what we see on conspiracy websites is 
is citations that go back to the earliest moments when the least information was available and virtually no reference to the voluminous research which is done uh, to follow up. Dylan, what about the issue of cell phones? The issue of cell phones is that for a majority of Flight 93's flight, it was flying over cruising altitude and a number of these, now a majority of the phone calls were coming from air, air phones, but the cell phone calls were coming from cruising altitude. Now it is pretty much impossible in 2001 to sustain an extended conversation over a cell phone at cruising altitude from a commercial airliner. But I mean, that's, that's not our strongest evidence. I mean, that's just one of the many things about that day that don't add, to up, that don't add up to us. And we haven't gotten to hear the cockpit voice recorder. We haven't gotten to hear any of these alleged phone calls. I mean, the government is cherry picking the evidence that it releases to the government. And I feel that if the, our government was truly attacked by surprise and we had absolutely no inclination in the attacks, they would not be so reticent to release the 84 videos from the Pentagon, uh, the cockpit voice recorder of Flight 93. The list of things that the government is holding from us goes on. David Dunbar. With regard to the cell phones, we did what any reporter would do. We talked to experts in the field, and in fact, cell phones do work at that altitude, up to 35,000 feet and higher. And um, in 2001? In 2001, and it might be instructive for you to talk to some of the cell phone experts. There are a lot of drop calls because the plane is moving at high speed and the handoffs sometimes get dropped. That's true. And we know from the public record that, in fact, a lot of the cell phone calls were, were cut off. And uh, most of the phone calls were made from the air phones. But nevertheless, talk to the experts and you'll find out that you can make a cell phone call from a commercial plane. Uh, if I may address that yeah. for one moment. If that's Jason true, then Reynolds. why in 2004 did American Airlines spend tens of thousands of dollars to put cell phone towers in their planes so people could make those calls? Why spend tens of thousands of dollars three years after the fact if they worked so well on September 11th? What he's saying is a total lie. James Max. We didn't say they worked well, we said they worked. And if you look at the record, many of the calls were dropped, they were incomplete. But especially over rural areas, you know, if you think about it, a cell phone tower covers, uh, can cover a couple hundred square miles. That coverage area goes up into the sky as well as horizontally ac across the ground. The, um, the reason downward. that they improved the system was to avoid the drop calls and to isolate the cell phone transmissions from any possible interference with the avionics.